Hey folks, it's Ray DCVamerica.com here and to get your full in-depth review of the Stages Bike, officially known as the SB20 Stages Bike 20. Now, of course, this is not the first bike Stages has made. In fact, they've probably made more bikes than anyone else out there. Stages makes bikes more on the commercial side and the indoor kind of spin side of things. And they've been doing that for many, many years for many, many different gyms. But this is the first truly smart bike they've made. One that integrates with Zwift and Trainer Road and other apps like that using AMP Plus and Bluetooth smart connections across all the standard protocols. Now, a couple quick starter things. One is the price. This is 2,899 US dollars. It is, however, available globally and shipping globally already, which is something that is pretty notable. Notable. In terms of price of indoor smart bikes, that's roughly in the middle of the range there. Uh, now for this video here, it's sort of long. Sorry, not really. Uh, but there are chapters. If you look and scroll across their timeline on YouTube, you'll see different chapters. So you can switch and move around to the right spot in the video that you want more information on or you can hit the full length review I've got posted as well that you'll see in the description there. It has tons more information than I could possibly fit in a video here without that video being like three hours long. So with that, the first thing you need to know is getting this darn thing unboxed and more importantly, getting it into the room that you want it to be in. Uh, now, prior to COVID-19, Stage's plan was to do its so-called white glove delivery. The same thing that Peloton does where basically they have a delivery person that comes in that sets up the whole thing or at least delivers it to the correct room in your house. Uh, but with COVID-19, that's not really possible anymore. So for the most part, they drop it uh, where they're going to drop it, and then it's up to you to get it where you need to go. In my case, that means getting it up these Dutch staircases, 45 degree angle, kind of crazy, but also kind of a little bit fun. Uh, I eventually gave up on the staircase. I tried to get it up there. It was just too steep, and it had 160 pounds for the box of this bike all in. It's a little less for the actual bike itself. Just wasn't possible. Now, once I got it up here, then it's unboxing time. And for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. I looked at the video for it took me about 20 minutes all in, and that's including taking photographs of the entire thing. So uh, for you, it's probably about the same ballpark because I've done enough of these smart bikes to know how it all works, and probably for you, it'll be your first time doing it. But 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops isn't that bad to set it all up, and it's very, very straightforward. In my case, I actually split up over two days merely because I had to get home to pick up the kids. Uh, and you can do it just with one person. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or something like that, just go ahead and whack the like button down the bottom there. It really helps out this video in the channel quite a bit. Okay, with that, we're going to walk through the bike from back to front. I find it's the most efficient way to talk about smart bikes, and so just kind of my, my jam there. The first thing you're going to talk about is fit. Uh, so in this case, there's a couple different ways to adjust the fit of the bike. First, you've got the saddle sliding forward and back using this here. And what's great about this is it's infinitely adjustable. There's no like lock steps like some smart bikes where it's like, you know, chunk, 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 chunk. This, you can move it the tiniest little bit. It's got markers on there and then tighten it back up again right there. And now it's nice and firm. Uh, you got up and down here for the saddle post, and it's actually got like a grippy tape inside, which at first might catch you off guard, like, why is it not going? Just simply slide it forward, and then you can push it up or down, and it's got the grippy tape so it doesn't slide at all. On the front, you got the same thing. Seat post here can go up and down like that. Uh, and then you've also got this lever right here to slide the entire, I think I'm loosen it, there we go. It's all right, you don't probably adjust it a ton. So once you get it in your place that you want to, you can adjust it like this forward and back. Uh, this is like the least smooth of the adjustment things, but... Okay, with that sliding back to the back here, uh, you do have these beefy legs. They've got little pads there, so if you want to step on them, it won't make your metal look less awesome or something, but it's, it's all good there. Uh, and then down here, you have the pedals and the crank arms. Now, what's interesting about the Stages bike is that most other bikes, they have either a power sensor internally, though most don't actually have this math and calculations to figure out, but this actually has three power meters in it. Uh, there is one here. There's one on the other crank arm right there. Same exact power meters as seen on a Stages power meter that might put on your bike outdoors. And there's also a power meter uh, connected up to the flywheel there to measure power as well. Uh, but on the crank arms, you have this bear paw design there. And that gives you four different crank lengths, a 165, a 170, 172.5, and 175 millimeter crank arms, just by putting in which hole you want for your pedals. Take your pedals, stick them in there, and you're good to go. Sliding up towards the front here is the flywheel. This beast is 50 pounds, or roughly 23 kilos. Uh, it is by far the biggest flywheel of any of the smart bikes out there. Uh, almost the same size, about the same size actually as the Peloton, which I think is like 48 pounds or so. In general though, the bigger the flywheel in terms of weight, the more road-like feel that you have. Uh, but again, it's not quite the same when you start going into electromagnetic design where there's a lot more factors at play there. 
Next on the front up here is the wheels, this right there. So if you wanted to go ahead and move it, you can. You just go up like this and then you just roll around where you want to go. Uh, despite being heavy, once it's on its front wheels, it's easy to move around. There's also a power cable down here as well that you can see. Got to have that plugged in uh, to have the resistance control of the trainer itself. Okay, moving on up the bike frame, you have two water bottle holders right here and there. We've got the handlebars. We'll talk about that in just a second. We're going to talk about it a lot, in fact. But I want to talk about the tablet holder here because it's super well designed. Uh, as you can see, I've got my tablet there, two USB ports right there, one and one, two amp USB ports, which is awesome. Uh, but it works really well. I just keep this thing plugged in all the time. And you can orient it different ways. So just take the cable out real quick here. Uh, I can put it in this way if I want to. And you can see how much range even vertically like this, like this could easily fit uh, this way anyways, and iPad Pro to assume. I can put my laptop here if I needed to, like it's just crazy how much space is there, super well designed. What's also interesting though is this inset piece, like this, I can put my phone like that, I can go like this, lots and lots of options. Uh, and you may be wondering like, why would I need a tablet holder when I've got a big screen TV up here? And that's true, but I'm not always using the big screen TV to do the app that I want. So when I finish up this workout, I'm gonna do a trainer run workout, I'm gonna do it on the tablet, on the iPad, and I'm gonna watch YouTube or TV, whatever the case is, up on the TV. I then got the spot right here for my phone. So toss it in there. Uh, there's a little cutout right there so I can plug it in if I need to, uh, using the charging cable. It's well thought out. It's got like a non um, slippery surface on it, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, the only downside though is it's not a good place to put remotes and stuff because they just will kind of eventually fall off. You'll bump them or whatever. Uh, but so I just put them down here in the water bottle holder, like I mentioned earlier. So let's talk about shifting and shifters. Uh, so there are a lot of buttons here and a lot of extensibility here. Uh, on both sides, there are two main buttons there and a third off the side. The two main buttons, what you shift uh, up and down. So on the left-hand side, that'll by default, you can customize and change all of this, but up and down at your front chain ring, your virtual front chain ring. On smart bikes, there's no real front and rear chain ring and cassettes. There's just simply virtually designed gears behind the scenes that you make up, as you'll see in just a second. Uh, and on the right-hand side, the exact same thing is duplicated. And then there's this third one right there, uh, which you can customize. And then down below here, there's two more below that. So there is basically five buttons on each side. All of them are totally customizable to however you want. And then there's auxiliary ports. You see these dots right there. Uh, one here is used and one here is used, but there's three in each side. So six in total. Now you'll notice here there are brakes up there. Uh, the brakes simply stop the flywheel. So if I were to go ahead and just spin this up real quick, I can hold these down in a couple seconds, it'll stop the flywheel. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the gearing aspects here because it's really kind of interesting. Uh, now what you've got here is complete customization in terms of how you design your drivetrain. So you could say that I want a two chain ring drivetrain up front and X number of cassette gearings in the back. Uh, you can do a one by, so to mimic more like a gravel or a mountain bike sort of setup. Not quite as much flexibility as Tax or Wahoo in terms of selecting all those gears and precisely what you want, but it's not bad. And that's something that they can adjust easily in software over time. And then once you've got that done, you choose which button style you want. Do you want, for example, uh, Shimano uh, DI2 style of buttons, or would you like a uh, Campagnolo buttons? There is not a SRAM, ETAP, or mechanical option yet. Stage just says that's coming this month here in July. Uh, so hopefully, because that's that's how I have my normal bike, so I'd love to see that as well. But you can go ahead and have multiple bike configurations. So you can have uh, one called your road bike, and one called your mountain bike, and one called your dream drive bike. And that's a concept where essentially they're taking like a one by, so in other words, where you have kind of one chain ring and unlimited cassettes, uh, and they're tweaking the concept slightly. So in dream drive, what you choose is one, how big the steps are between each shift on the left-hand side. So what is normally your you know, big ring to small ring, you're effectively jumping up increments on the cassette in the back. So by default, it's three steps per button left-hand side, but you can make it five steps or even 10 steps, which would be crazy, but you could do that. And it'd be crazy because you can also change the number of rings on your cassette in the back. Uh, so you can, by default, it's 25, but you can make a 30 or 40 or 50 is a limit there. So you could have 50 different steps on that particular cassette, uh, and then you could change the increments of that. Uh, now, the idea behind this here is to have pretty much any gearing that you want, and to be able to adjust it one step at a time with your right-hand side and X number of steps on the left-hand side. Uh, again, by default, it's three. In addition to customizing all of the shifting button options here. That also includes the buttons down here as well. Uh, and additionally, the auxiliary port buttons, uh, if you get those two. So there's tons of, of customization there. Uh, the idea though with all these extra buttons is that apps like Zwift would come along and allow 
bikes to enable them. So for example, some could be used for steering. These left buttons right here would be a great example of that. Uh, some could be used for doing certain functions in Zwift. So you can go down and use these bottom buttons right here to perhaps use a power up or change the view, whatever the case may be. And that's really where Zwift needs to kind of advance himself a little bit further and allow these manufacturers, all these bike manufacturers that have all these extra buttons to do something with them. Uh, now the Stages bike broadcasts both AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. It broadcasts both AMP Plus FEC as well as Bluetooth Smart FTMS, broadcast power, broadcast cadence, broadcast speed on the uh, smart side of things, smart bike side of things. Basically it broadcasts everything you want to connect to any app you want. If there's any app out there that won't connect to this bike, that is 100% on that app at this point in terms of uh, the basics there. The one thing you won't get though, and this is some, one of the challenges, is you won't get gearing display. As you notice in this entire setup, there is no gearing display anywhere on here, and that's sort of a bummer. Instead, you've got to use your phone to display gears, which you can do, and it works just fine, uh, but it's not as ideal as having it built into the bike, like you'd see on a tax bike or the kicker bike, or built into Zwift. Zwift, unfortunately, hasn't allowed other companies to add a gearing display into it. They have for the Watt Bike Atom on Bluetooth Smart, but not even on AMP Plus, but everyone else has been asking Zwift to do it, and unfortunately, we're stuck with no gearing display there. So with that, let's jump on the bike here and start talking about some of the details of riding it. Uh, first off, from a road feel standpoint, it feels pretty good. It doesn't feel like fantastic, but it feels pretty good. I'd say in the same general ballpark as Tax and Wahoo. The difference though, in those cases, they also have downhill drive, which means that'll spin the bike wheel forward as you go down a hill. This doesn't have that, so you're not gonna have that additional uh, feeling of going down a hill like you would uh, on those bikes, but you know, for the most part, it's pretty good here. The next bit would be sprint responsiveness. Uh, and in this case, it's good from a responsiveness standpoint. In other words, when I throw down a sprint, how fast does the bike react in Zwift and otherwise? And that part is on point. The main area that I've had some problems with is erg mode. Uh, and that's where you basically you're setting a given wattage, like 250 watts, uh, and you're iterating through a workout. In my case, I'm primarily using train road. And in that case, the problem I've had is that it's kind of wobbly. Now, I'm not talking about the accuracy of the power. We'll, we'll get into that in just a minute. I'm talking about the ability for the program to maintain 250 watts or 300 watts or 320 watts. So whatever number I set it to, it's a little rough. Uh, and Stata says that's because their giant flywheel down there and that it's got so much momentum that controlling that is tough. I think some of that's also due to smoothing. Most of the companies apply a bit more smoothing and I often talk about companies applying too much smoothing, uh, but in this case, rarely, I think Stages needs to apply a little more so it can just see what's the actual workout. Otherwise, the numbers fluctuate so much, plus or minus 50 watts in some cases, that I don't even see the segments of these workouts anymore, uh, which is a bit of a problem. In terms of the actual average power for those segments, they are spot on. Okay, so let's talk about the audio on the Stages bike, or the sound of it. Uh, and it, you don't hear anything. So right now you're listening to it via my lav mic right here, which means you're probably not really hearing much of anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the mic cord out of the camera. You can hear it from the camera itself. Okay, now I'm on the camera audio. You hear the echo that is the DCR cave. It's a giant concrete box, so your living room probably better. And you'll be able to hear down below there uh, the actual bike itself. And even if I increase, there we go, some wattage, bring it up. You don't hear much of anything really. There's no real appreciable sound there. Even a full on sprint. Okay, now back on the mic, one notable thing about noise is that I have heard on some sessions, a bit of a light thunk, thunk, thunk from somewhere in the flywheel there. In talking to stages, they think it may be the bearings there. They've offered to swap it out as just like any other customer would, um, but I, I don't have any doubt that will probably fix it. Uh, but just to be clear, that is something I have seen. They think it may be something to do with being an earlier production run, uh, but something I just wanted to at least mention. So now is a good time to talk though about power accuracy. And for that, we're gonna zip back to the desk there uh, and do it all there and look at some charts and accuracy graphs and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of cruise through this because frankly, it's really darn good from a power accuracy standpoint. And I've got all this outlined in way more detail on the site as well in the description down below there. This is a Zwift session. Uh, you can see it's mostly just rambling along, but I've got a couple of nice strong sprints in there as well. And I 
want to look at this one right here because honestly, it's it's one of the more interesting things I've seen in a power accuracy test. And you can see here, compared against Favero Asioma pedals, it's within one watt at 996 watts, so just shy of a thousand watts. That is really, really, really hard to do to get two power meters to be that close to each other uh, at this uh, intensity. And so across the entire board, I see more or less the same thing. Uh, now it is a bit more wobbly in some cases, and that stability doesn't affect the accuracy. It's more about just stability of the power in general. Uh, and you see the same thing here in erg mode. This is the train road session. And if we zoom into one of these right here for fun, there we go. You can see that it's very, very similar. I mean, the, the difference is here about three watts in most cases, uh, one watt. Uh, that one briefly, there we go, three watts. You know, you'll see like slight couple, second to second differences, but in terms of the overall trend, you're talking just a couple watts difference. Uh, if we look down here at the average power right there, so 273 versus 274, I mean, these are essentially identical across the board. It's so close across everything, whether it be power or cadence, that it's just kind of boring to look at. Uh, but if you do like boring, then on my full review, you can look at all the details there uh, from a full boringness standpoint. Ultimately, I think from a hardware standpoint, Stages has got a pretty solid bike. I have very few quibbles with it. The only thing I'd love to see them offer is a different handlebar setup with actual real shifters. But beyond that, it's a solid piece of machinery. And I think we're going to see that Stages will probably have less early teething issues with hardware than Tax and Wahoo did, which lasted many, many, many months, uh, simply because Stages has been doing this longer than those. Uh, so that's something to, to kind of take into account as well. Inversely, from a software standpoint, Stages is definitely less mature than Wahoo and tax. So that's something you also may need to consider as well. And realistically, the gaps in the stages software today aren't mission critical to your day-to-day -day bike. They're more like nice-to-haves than must-haves. Okay, so with that, hopefully you found this review interesting or informative or entertaining or just something at all. Uh, if so, go ahead and give it a like down the bottom there or hit the subscribe button for more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.